WP Bakery is one of the oldest and most well-known WordPress page builders out there. Released back in 2011, the plugin has close to 400,000 sales and powers countless WordPress websites to this day. If you want to use this simple page builder to create advanced pages, here's our beginner's guide to the WP Bakery page builder. If this video ends up being useful to you, please consider subscribing to our channel for more WordPress and WooCommerce related topics. WP Bakery offers two single payment licenses. You can choose one according to your needs. After purchasing, you can download the plugin zip file on your computer. On your WordPress dashboard, hover over the plugins tab and click add new. Then click upload plugin. Add the plugin zip file from your computer and click install now. Then activate the plugin. A new tab called WP Bakery Page Builder has been added to our dashboard. Hover over it and select General Settings. This option prevents content elements from misbehaving on small screens. Below, select the Google font subsets available to content elements. We can also select the default templates for posts and pages using these dropdowns. More options will become available when you save them first. Let's save the changes and move on to the Role Manager section. Here, you can decide which features are accessible to the roles on your website. Let's customize the administrator's role. If you want to use WP Bakery for creating both pages and posts, select Custom from the drop-down. Then enable the Post option. Below, make sure all options are either set to Enabled or All, so that you get access to all the WP Bakery features as the administrator. The editor, author, and contributor roles have the same settings, but you can change them according to your website's needs. For example, you can prevent contributors from changing page settings by selecting Disable for this option. When you're done, save the changes, and hop over to the Design Options section. By enabling the Custom Design Options setting, you can select the default colors for various WP Bakery page builder elements like hover, post sliders, and separators. You can also set the bottom margins for elements, horizontal spacing between columns, and screen width for mobile screens. The Custom CSS section lets you add custom CSS codes that control the appearance of HTML elements on the web page. While the shortcode mapper can add custom third-party vendor shortcodes to WP Bakery's content elements. Hover over Posts or Pages and click Add New. By default, the page opens up with the classic WordPress editor. We can use one of these buttons to access the WP Bakery page builder. The backend editor lets you play around with a huge number of elements and templates to build the perfect page. While the front-end editor offers a what you see is what you get experience so you get exactly what you expect. The layouts for both the backend and frontend editors are almost entirely similar. We have a toolbar at the top of the screen. The plus icon lets us add elements to the page. This is the templates button which lets you access your saved templates and the template library. The gear icon lets us add custom CSS codes to the post. And you can click this button to preview your page on different screen sizes. This button lets us switch to the backend editor. Finally, we can save changes using this button and publish them using this one. Below, we have three self-explanatory buttons to add an element, add a text block, and add a template. We can choose from more than 50 elements like row, single image, video player, WP search, widgetized sidebar, button, separator, FAQ, custom heading, and more. We can also choose from more than 85 page templates to speed up our page building process. All templates can be imported with a click and are fully editable. Building a page with the WP Bakery page builder is simple. Let's start by editing the title. Clicking on no title opens a pop-up. Type the page title here and click Save Changes and close the pop-up. 
Let's add an image below it. Click the Add Element button again. Then select Single Image. A pop-up shows us all the options available for the image. If you're using the element in your widget area, you can set a widget title here. Select the image source from the drop-down. And click the plus icon. Let's add a caption to the image. And click set image. Below, we have the option to determine the image size. You can either simply type the image sizes like thumbnail, medium, large, full, and other sizes defined by the theme or you can type the size in pixels. We want the image to be large. Click Save Changes to see the changes on the page. You can choose to display the image caption with this option, and select the image alignment on the page. You can also choose some simple image style from the drop-down, and decide what happens when a visitor clicks the image. We want a full-sized image, that will open in a new window. We can use the CSS animation option to add some motion to the image. We can select the animation from the drop-down and view the animation here. Then click Save Changes to view the final effect on the image. The Image Settings pop-up has a Design Options tab as well. Here, we can assign the width for the padding, border, and margin of the image. The padding is the space between the image and the border, while the margin determines the space between the border and the edge of the page. Let's add a border to the image. Pick a border color. Select a border style. Choose a border radius. And type the border width values. When we click Save Changes, we can see that a blue, solid, round-cornered border has been added to the image. We can add a padding value to push the border away from the image. Enable the Simplify Controls option if you want to use the same values for all four sides. Then type a padding value. And save changes. We can also add a background color or image for our image element. Finally, let's add a margin value at the bottom to separate it from the next element. Save the changes and click close. Let's add another row below the image. When you hover over it you'll notice some options. These options help us edit the row and column settings. You can click and hold this button to drag and relocate the row. This button lets us add columns to the row element. We can select one from here, or type in our own column layout. Then click update and close it. We can now add two elements in these two columns. Let's add some text here. Click the plus icon, and select the text block. Then type your own text here. You can format the text using these options. For example, you can add a link using the link button. We can add a CSS animation to the text block using this dropdown. And just like the image block, you can go to the Design Options section and add a border and padding to the block. Click Save Changes when you're done and close the pop-up. Let's add a button next to the text block. Select the button block. Add a button text in this field. And click the Select URL button. You can directly paste the URL here. Or you can link to existing content on your website by searching for it, or selecting it from this list. Enable this option if you want the link to open in a new tab. And make it a nofollow link using this option. Then click set link. You can then choose from various button styles, shapes, sizes, alignments, icons, and CSS animations. And of course, you get the same padding, border, and margin options just like the text and image blocks. Click Save Changes when you're done. You can rearrange the blocks like this. And the block settings can be opened by clicking the pencil icon. Make sure that the page works on all screen sizes. When you're done, click Publish. The same principles apply to WP Bakery's backend editor. 
and this is how you can easily build your page one block at a time with the WP Bakery page builder. Check out LearnWoo.com for more articles, videos, and resources related to WordPress and WooCommerce. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media channels. And do let us know in the comment section if you want us to cover a specific topic or if you have any ideas or suggestions.